Brian. Good to see you, good to see you brother. Where, you, where have you been and what's been happening? Well, at least I've been back home, uh, visited and been back to Ethiopia uh, by myself uh, in April last year. Mm -hmm. And of course, I went back in December last year and uh, January. Uh, what we did was to have, we, I resumed the Nile Valley tours from Ethiopia, Sudan, and Egypt starting right. this last December. You were discontinued for a little because while. Because right? of the war, the, right. the civil war that went on both in Ethiopia and Sudan. Now that both of these are uh, finished, uh, we went back and to a gala welcome from the people of the area. Mm. Th there is a, a place where... Uh, and, and I think we always have to reiterate this because people have heard about you and many of them have heard you. But the length of your journey, and our, and our theme this month is telling our story, but the, the length of your journey is a very critical one, I think, for people to understand. Let's go back through your, your story and the point at which you began to hear the kind of information that really set you on your life's path and your life's work. Uh, I started in 1939. Uh, because of uh, teachers in Puerto Rico, I was living in Puerto Rico. That's the homeland of my mother. Uh, her birth was there. Uh, my father had been Ethiopian, myself in Ethiopia. I came a small boy to the Caribbean and grew up in between Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and so forth. Uh, while in high school and junior college, and the college there, the constant bicker bickering about the teachers and the constant uh, racist statements about Africans not being civilized before the missionary come and so and all kinds of things and especially a time a period called uh, Sao Mau Bautismo Day the, the, the day of St. John the Baptist when the people go to the countryside to visit that week the school children are all uh, uh, encouraged to get up individually and say something about their background because Puerto Rico you know was uh, conquered uh, but again, from the indigenous people, the Caribs, and um, the African, the European, and the indigenous people uh, settled there. But since the Spaniard didn't bring m any women, they used the local woman or the African woman brought in, and they become the mother of what is called the Puricano, the Latino. And this is typical of the whole of South America and the, Car and the Caribbean Islands. Uh, well, that uh, caused me to go to Egypt by a long, it'll be a long story, my father uh, uh, encouraging and so forth. And this started in 1939. Now, what was your, what, what was your father saying to you about the story? Well, uh, when I went to complain to my father, he took a key from around his neck and gave it to me. He had had that key there for a long time to a, a, a closet, China closet, where there were some books. Uh, he had other books, of course, as a practice. But these specifically were locked away. And uh, I never check about them, but uh, this day he says, he gave me the key. And he says, take those books there. They're yours from now on. So when I went into the books, such as uh, Book of the Dead and, uh, and Eclipses, two volumes and of that nature, I, I then immediately asked him, well, why, why, why now? Why you give me this book now? He said, because now you will know to appreciate it. If I gave you before, you would not, you would have just gone some a few pages and gone. Now you know you need this. Mm -hmm. And you need all the, you got to read all the references stated in this book. And all the sub notes, you must read them. And then you must read the sub notes and references from the notes that you read and check up. And all those books. Now when you finish this, then tell me who has no history. Mm -hmm. And you know, my brother, I, that's for 39. <laughs> I have stopped writing reading yet. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I haven't completed one book so far as the references is concerned. Because mm -hmm. the references got references and got books. <laughs> exactly, right. And right, so, right, so right. that I started then. Though I did not start out full time uh, as, as an Egyptologist or a numerologist, I started out as a civil engineer. Mm -hmm. I went and completed my work in civil engineering and worked at a, sm a small time, even uh, in Sanada Wunda in the base in Puerto Rico. Uh, I then uh, went and took my uh, master's in uh, civil engineering and joint a joint uh, drinking and in uh, cultural anthropology in Havana. The, and then I left Havana and I also took a doctorate in anthropology. I left Havana and went to, Cuba, to Barcelona in Spain and then took my master's in Moorish history. Mm. Uh, subsequent to that, I took a law degree 
because that is required uh, Ethiopian culture. The, the oldest son must follow the father. In my case, my father only had one son, so I was the oldest son. So you had to do whatever else you were uh, doing and follow him as I well. I had to satisfy him. Yeah. Uh, I, really, you're supposed to satisfy him immediately. Mm. Uh, I was being rude by not following my father for support stuff. But I guess being the West, he frowned about it, but he didn't say, well, you got to. Uh, but out of my understanding of culture and my obligation, I went and did it for him. And uh, I practiced at it uh, a little while, but uh, there were some conflicts between my father and myself, mm -hmm. and it was best to leave that area. I see. Uh, but then I started to work, do different work, teaching, working in the United Nations, UNESCO, and at the same time, in all of this, I am doing sideline, I think I'm writing. Uh, in 1969, I wrote, I, wrote uh, I mean, in 1939, I wrote, We the Black Jews. Uh, this, I have a copy here, just came out uh, Friday gone. This is the update now, right? Th this is an update of the right. original. Original was a pamphlet in Spanish, and I did it down in Puerto Rico. Nosotros se viros negro. And this here I did in 1981, I think, and I rewrote it. Uh, with this time with two on a, one cover, two volumes. I included this time the Car uh, Hebrews of the Caribbean, Hebrews of West Africa, Hebrews of uh, uh, African America, and Hebrews from Africa, the quote-unquote falashas, uh, which is proper to Beta Israel. Mm -hmm. And this is, uh, Doc, we're saying the origin of this project then is 1939? That's the origin of that project. Um, there is a place where, of course, um, and, and, I, and I have noted very quickly that you uh, dealt with this, that people in many instances uh, forget that we are talking about a religion and not a race. Oh, no, the Jews are not a race. Uh, you got Kashim Jews from India. Look like any Indian you know. You have the, the, the uh, Swedish Jew, blonde, look like any blonde Swede. You have the African Jew, of course, ourselves. Look like any African you can see in Harlem. And uh, you see, the myth of a Jewish race is a tremendous hoax. And the people who are doing that, they are, they are a race conveniently when they want to be, and another time they are European, and another time they are Semites, and all kinds of different things. So you can't tie them down. But, but the fact is, all throughout Europe, the Jews were never a race. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't permit them to be of the white race. But now they come here, they can be of the white race, they can be... Uh, uh, of a thing called Semitic race, and that is a joke about Semitic race because this, this is based upon uh, Jewish mythology uh, with flood with Noah and cursing one son and the, and the son Ham came out, uh, his children came black. Then what were the other children? Mm -hmm. You know, what was, what was uh, the father, Noah and the mother? And how could the father and mother have so many, the Semitic race, the Hermetic race, and that other kind of race, all kind of termite race? They got all kind of stupidness. And I'm not supposed to say that because it's in the Bible, but the Bible got lies in it. It got truths, it got lies, it got a it got, uh, little of everything, lovemaking, you know, every little thing mm -hmm. is in there. But people treat it as if this is something coming from a person called God. You in the book uh, that we're describing here, uh, We the Black Jews, uh, get into something which I think ultimately uh, becomes very important for many of us in terms of, of understanding, and I think this is the point you were making earlier about culture and you talked about uh, going being rebellious against your father in a certain mm -hmm. way by not following what would have been the cultural track you mentioned here um, present religious practices and customs many of us don't really know this information you yourself of course grew up as, as a quote unquote Hebrew. Hebrew can, can you uh, take us through a bit of this just for brothers and sisters to begin to understand well, well take for instance when people hear of a bar mitzvah mm -hmm. they, they think of just a religious function a bar mitzvah is a political act. It's when the, the boy is taking an oath that now he has grown to be a man. He's going to defend his well. He must, when he goes to his community, he must build a hospital. He must have a school. He must have a shul. These are obligations he, took, he takes when he bar mitzvah. These are nationalistic obligations that he will sit with. And uh, when you say this, some people don't want it. That way because become, uh, they, they, they kind of put them that they are doing political act under the label of religion. But, but, but Mitzvah is political. It's just like rite of passage. Mm -hmm. Same kind of thing. Mm -hmm. The boy is doing his rite of passage. Mm. 
more on this uh, in terms of, of order of religious service and, and so forth. Uh, just explain some of this to us. Well, uh, according to Western Jews, they have uh, 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 divided the Torah into certain periods of time when you're supposed to say certain parts of the Torah. And so that every Saturday in the year, they, they, they have uh, singled out a particular part of the Torah to be read. Hmm. Uh, but anybody could set that up. There's no nothing coming from any God saying you got to do that. So you got to do that. That's done by the those who control uh, Judaism right now in the world. Judaism is controlled by European Jews, even though they're the last in in, in it. And it has, as I said, it doesn't have to do with race, a Jewish race. But it just so happened that the Jews in in in, in Europe, for uh, at, at a, as a matter of fact, the majority came as a result of con conversion of the Khazar, the Khazar people. Uh, there was a war going on between Christians and Muslims in Europe, just in the same places going on right now again. And they were caught in there and didn't want to come on either side. They want to be caught by Muslims or Christians. And they then converted to the new religion going through the area, a smaller group called the Jews. And these Khazars became Jews, and that's the origin of the European Jews. You, but the, the, the point seems to, to indicate that there is another time in which we are seeing this particular religion controlled by someone else. Well, the, the religion has been controlled by uh, other people, and it controls other people too. Like, uh, the religion took over other people's land. Uh, Judaism was, was formed in the colonization and enslavement of the people of Canaan, uh, and, and murder of the people of Canaan. It, they said that, uh, remember that, that God told them to destroy their land, and they went and killed the seven nations of people. The Amalekites, the Hittites, the Moabites, the Shavites, and all kind of them. Seven nations of people to the last men. Only other one other place we know such a genocide of it took place, and that's in Tasmania. When the British and the Irish and everybody uh, kill out all their Tasmanians to the last men. And yet that is in the Torah. But nobody says this. And we keep talking about Holocaust, and we don't talk with the S at the end. And we don't talk about the Holocaust that was done right there in Israel by Hebrews. I, I, well, my mother and father had that same background. And it, when I talked to them about it, they would get angry. I said, well, you can talk about everybody has the Holocaust, but you want to talk when you, uh, when you put the Holocaust on other people. Of course, I didn't tell them point blank like that. Mm -hmm. I can't decode it, so I didn't get my mouth and the <laughs> back. Give, give them back to me in a place. Mm -hmm. um, let, let's move down uh, some of this because I think it's, it's, uh, it's interesting. When you start to talk about the, the culture, and I noticed that when you identified the Falasha family, you put quotations around it. Falasha. I'd like you to do because with that. Because Falasha is a, is a Falasha is like saying nigger. Uh, it is an Amharic word, uh, not uh, by the uh, Af Af Ethiopian Hebrews. Falasha means don't touch me, strange people, funny, uh, you know, cowards, or anything of that nature. The people, or people call ourselves Better Israel, children of the house of Israel. Falasha is a Amharic word and a very ugly uh, word. And you're saying the correct identif identification would be Beth Better Israel? Israel. Okay, yes. I see. Now, now, take us through some of what you discuss in the book, structure and function, courtship and marriage, and women in the community, and monogamy and polygamy and all right. that. Right. Well, uh, we follow, Falasha the rule follow uh, Torah. Do not follow Talmud. The Talmud is uh, an attempt to write an exact interpretation of what the Torah says. For example, most of us, uh, at least at home, used to eat meat and milk together. But we did not boil the meat in its mother's milk. The Torah, uh, Torah said, don't boil meat in its mother's milk. Don't cut the, the, the cattle. And then... Uh, take the meat that you cut off of him and boil it and cook it. They used to do that in the ancient times. The cattle would get sick, disease, and it would cause them to die. So to, in, instead of, if you tell the people, medical health said, don't do this, they, they're going to still do it. But if you tell them, God said, don't do it, they, they won't do it. So they bring out this rule. Uh, and, and so that we, uh, Falashas, didn't follow the uh, Talmud. Europeans followed the Talmud. So, so many other Hebrews don't follow Talmud. As I said, Talmud is not Torah. Torah uh, you, must, you must follow tal, tal, Torah. You don't have to follow Talmud. Now, uh, marriages and so forth, the marriage custom and vow, uh, very strict. 
uh, for instance, uh, the night of the, the girl is required to come to the marriage bed uh, a virgin. The boy, too, in his first, is expected to come to the marriage bed uh, a virgin. Very so male and female? M male and female. The first marriage, you must come as a virgin to the bed. Now, uh, this is very serious because let us see that the girl didn't come the next day after the wedding. She doesn't show the little uh, piece of cloth she's given that she lies on. And it doesn't have the blood stain. It will stone her to death. Uh, in the tra that's the tradition. Uh, the, the Hebrews didn't kill people by hanging or by putting them in a cross. They stone you to death. And you, you're free to run if you could get away and you get out of the community, you're free. But you couldn't go to another Hebrew community because they will want to know where you're from and everything. By the time they find out, they, they start knowing you also. So you, you generally were lost to the community. They will sit and pray. The mother and father will say, as you're dead, and you're dead to them. They will never call your name again. Hmm. Uh, but the marriage custom is one of, again, uh, strictly uh, traditional. Uh, a person can marry your first cousin. As a matter of fact, they, that's preferred. They try to make you get to marry your first cousin. Everything stay in the family. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's, that's, I found that even here in the Western world, the marriage of the uh, first cousin is preferable. And many other cultures besides uh, the Hebrew culture. Uh, uh, customs, customs uh, pertaining to food habits, uh, what you call kashut, uh, you call kosher here, uh, they, they have the same rigid, even more rigid than the West. Uh, Falasa don't eat steak uh, because you can't, when you have steak, the meat is too thick to get all the blood out. So they will cut up the blood, the meat in uh, small pieces so the salt can go through and take out the blood. You can't take, uh, that way. Uh, the rituals are very strict. Uh, for instance, Falasha can't carry money in his pocket and, his, and the Shabbat. Uh, he can't, um, he can't uh, have any relationship with his wife uh, from sundown Friday night to, to sundown uh, Saturday. Hmm. Uh, then uh, Falasha still had, uh, in Ethiopia, still had the animal sacrifice. Uh, uh, Young Kippa, Young Kippa, Rosh Hashanah, uh, and one of the Passover. Uh, women are not, were not allowed to be at the sacrifice, only the men and the priests, because it's believed that her blood will mix with the sacrifice and then the sacrifice would not count. Uh, she did not stay, women could not go into the synagogue. Uh, she can stay outside and look in. But she wasn't allowed in the synagogue again for the same reason again, that her blood uh, would, would do that. And it is a belief that when a woman had a child, the child, the blood of the child exempt her and clean her from the sins that she might have had, mm -hmm. whether the child is male or female. Mm -hmm. uh, so that the, 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 the rules of Pharisees are way, way earlier than, than practiced by the, uh, by the European Hebrews. Mm. Uh, We're going to take a break for a moment. I want to come back and talk about the, the marriage dimensions that you discuss in the book. You get into monogamy and polygamy, and we'll talk about mm. that and more after this. Dr. Ben is with us inside of the GBE, kicking off African Heritage Month, our theme, Telling Our Story. We'll come back in just a moment. And us today, someone who certainly tells it better than most people that we've ever seen come across our history and certainly has dedicated himself to it, as you've heard from the year 1939. I'm speaking of Dr. Ben. Uh, Dr. Ben, we've got about four minutes before we go to news. Um, monogamy or polygamy? within the context of this particular cultural system? Well, Falashas are not compelled to do either. You, are, uh, you have your option, and the option is based upon your ability to support a, a wife. My grandfather, my father's father, my father, grandfather had 11 wives. 11 wives? Yes, there's no restriction. We had a big farm and everything like that. Mm -hmm. My father is 60, uh, the, the first of 61 children. Uh, and then, well, all of those women were my grandmothers. And the, the, when I went back to Ethiopia the first time and I asked, who is my grandmother biologically, they asked me, what, what, why do I want to know that? It's no business of mine. He said, your father is the only one to do that, that you are going to bed with us. Mm. And then uh, what you want to know, who, who you, your father came from, he's here. And all of us is, is his mother. Mm. That was it. And so the polygamy, uh, polygamy, polygamy or monogamy, is forced on you according to the culture and your population. If you get an overwhelming amount of women, 
and you got monogamy, there are a lot of these women who, if you're following the monogamy, then it means thousands of these women going die yearly without ever having had a sexual intercourse. Thus, the purpose of the human being is to to procreate, to spread its it, it, the, 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 um, uh, the race, I use the word race, but the species. Now, if you don't procreate, how? If you got women going back all the time, never having been used, then what happened? The race eventually going to die. And uh, uh, to, to come up with something and, and say, no, if you got widows, again, they're going to be widows. You have to have polygamy to, to take the slack for those widows as well as the women who might not have got married. After a certain age, a man it doesn't want a woman, a young man, because he, he look, think that she's not going to procreate. So he gets a younger. But that woman would be denied the privilege of being a wife. So what the death, she would become the second wife. You know? Mm -hmm. But do, it doesn't mean the second wife doesn't mean she's a lesser woman or a lesser wife. It just means she gets the, sec she's the second place. Mm -hmm. There's a place, uh, uh, Doc, and certainly the, the arguments uh, are compelling, they're logical. Uh, what is your feeling about the uh, sisters and their reactions to polygamy in this lifestyle and also brothers who attempt to promote it? I've had the question asked uh, to me by, I have, I have eight daughters and four sons, and I've asked, uh, had to deal with it in terms of my children. I told my daughters, if you are the wife and you're going to be a wife and not a harlot, then it's all right. I see nothing wrong with it. Providing that you have that recognition, you must get the recognition. Either it's going to be recognition from the church, synagogue, mosque, or whatever it is, or from the state. But you need a recognition, not just the, the guy mouth, well, I marry you, darling, and you know we married, and don't worry about, about the white man law and things. That's a jive. That's a joke. Mm -hmm. You have to have some place, and if it is not that, then you need a marriage contract that states your right, because marriage is nothing more than a ritual towards a contractual obligation for ownership. That if you die or I die, I am entitled to what you have without anybody else by virtue of this piece of paper. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, all this thing about what God made, uh, let no man put a son, that's a joke. That's what the rabbi said, the priest said, the minister said, but they know, you see, none of these things, any God wrote anything. No, there's not a piece of thing in the Bible, the Quran, or the Torah where God wrote. It's where man wrote or woman wrote and said God said it to some guy the other day which nobody got his record either. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Ben is with us live at Talk Radio 1190 WIB. There is lots more to come. It's African Heritage Month. Our theme is telling our story. We'll talk more with Dr. Ben and give you the chance to join us too at 692-9542 and the nationwide toll-free number 1-800-332-1023. It's the GBE 93, more than a month for our history. Our theme is telling our story. We'll take your calls at 692-9542 and the nationwide toll-free number 1-800-332-1023. We look forward to having your calls coming today from Manhattan, Brooklyn, the Bronx, Queens, Long Island, Staten Island, and New Jersey, upstate, out of state, and Connecticut as well. And just a quick note, and I say this only in the context of, of a very quick remark, and that is that we are very clear in a broadcast this morning on WLIB, very, I think, definitely indicated that there are provocateurs uh, who, along with others, would perhaps like to castigate or do certain things towards WLIB to diminish the kind of power that the station has in the community. I say that to those of you who understand what we do and why we do what we do and understand that there is a need for us to be very clear and on point and know that there are provocateurs who may attempt to utilize opportunities to castigate the station and to present a particular picture of the radio station. Understanding that, we certainly will handle ourselves accordingly. Talk Radio 1190 WIB, you're inside of the GBE. Good afternoon. Gary? You're in the air with Dr. Ben. Go uh, ahead, please. Yes, I have a question for Dr. Ben. Sure, go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, yes, Dr. Ben, I have a question. Uh, with the falling away of the old religion that uh, we as the people have um, a lot of stuff to be assimilated with, like Christianity and Orthodox Islam or whatnot, and with the rising of the more holistic type of um, religion, like e Egyptology, I would like to know, say, for instance, the different um, dynasties, say, uh, the, the Ramesses dynasty or the Hiskos uh, dynasty, is there any danger of us falling into divisions again, saying, well, I believe in this uh, dynasty and they have certain deities, or I believe in this dynasty and we have certain deities, how can we prevent that from happening again, like the, the Pentecostals and the Methodists? I don't, I don't know what you mean by happening again. There was never a 
the ancient Egyptian never had a religious problem. I mean, us following. Today. No, because ancient Egyptians added deities, God and goddesses, as they went along, and no god or, or goddess was put out or diminished. Uh, if they didn't use it, it was still there, and they could always go back to it. So that they, that's why they added deities. Uh, so, so brother, you're you're saying, and, and, and Doc is saying, obviously that we can't use the past as a model because what you just described didn't happen there. Right. But you're saying, as far as here, right, yeah. how do we prevent that from happening? Right. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, Think, well, uh, our gods are better than your gods. Well, you, you can't stop it because it's already here, and and it's so. And in other words, the Jews, the Christians, and the Muslims in America each teach that they got the only right way. And as long as you got a God system and a teaching that it is the only way, and that God comes directly to you, how are you going to then change this at a later date? The people are really biased. You, uh, you pick a Jew, a Christian, a Muslim, each of them got the only way, and each of them is re are religious bigots. Is there any way to unify all of the dynasties? How are you going to do? What, you can't keep talking about dynasty. Dynasty got nothing to do with this. Hmm. What dynasty are you talking about? There, there, to the brother, let, let's take this maybe a step further. And thank you for the call. Doc, there's a place where it, it perhaps becomes important to establish that when we talk about, again, the so-called mystery systems, that we're talking really about the source for these religions that we're actually... In the on. first place, the mystery system was not a religious system. The mystery, at the mystery system, you had engineering, science, law. Uh, every discipline you could take up was taught there. That complex was the education system. The Greeks are the ones that called it the mystery system. Mm -hmm. It was mysterious to them because they didn't know what was going on. Mm -hmm. And when they came, they called it the mystery system. But the indigenous people just called it the education system. It was their education system. They saw nothing less mysterious about it because those who were the, the priests were the ones who, who ran everything, the ones who taught everything, and, and they were learned. It, they take 40 years to train a priest. Yes. He studied everything there was without going back home. Now, he was there. That's it. This is a, as in the case of Moses. He came in at, at, came in at age 70 and he left at age 47. And if there was a Moses, and they said, the, the Torah says, he was learned in the ways of the Egyptian priests. Now, what are the ways of the Egyptian priests? Forty years of study, including the Ten Commandments plus 32 more, uh, 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 20, uh, 22 more, 42 total, uh, one of them, thou shalt not kill, what, you know, and so forth. It was learning how to make a calendar, the first calendar, how to do mathematics, how to do science, all the, 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 the medical papyrus, hundreds of medical papyrus before Hippocrates was born. It, was, it included all those things. Hmm. We're at Talk Radio 1190, WIB, you're inside of the GBE with Dr. Ben. Go right ahead, please. Yes, good afternoon, Brother Gary. Good afternoon. And uh, one of my gods, right. Dr. Ben. Uh, I would like to ask you, uh, Dr. Ben, I, I've been troubled over this question of the first Hebrew, uh, which was allegedly Abraham. Uh, it doesn't say that his dad and mama was, and uh, I don't see Oh, yes, it, it, it says uh, Terah was his father. Right, but it doesn't say uh, Abraham is the first Hebrew. Yes, because his mother and father were not Hebrews. He, he by his baptism and... Uh, acceptance of, to, of uh, Yahweh, Yahweh supposed to uh, make him a Hebrew. Uh -huh. Well, what I'm getting at is um, I'm, I'm confused at how white folks become uh, uh, Hebrew. Because green and, and pink and technical of people could be Hebrew. The, the Hebrew religion is no more than the Christian religion, the Muslim religion, the Hindu religion. It's not a race. You don't have a, a, a Hebrew race. You don't have a Hebrew color. You have a Hebrew culture and religion. So it's a matter of uh, adoption rather than... Yes, yeah, Sammy Davis was as much Hebrew as any uh, a white fellow you could see on the street, Rye Quinn. Uh -huh. The last thing I wanted to, uh, to, uh, to bring to your attention is there is a profoundly uh, uh, positive and uh, highly contributive uh, brother who teaches African culture and history. As a matter of fact, I think I've heard you and him together on WLIB. Um, I learned by accident that this brother now is losing his sight, and uh, he has nobody to cook for him. He has nobody to kind you of mean, watch You mean Dr. John Henry Clark? Yes, and I am... That's not necessarily true what you heard. Hmm. I, I'm appalled and aghast that this I said, is so. you're not hearing. 
that's not necessarily true. The brother has helped. I know that personally. I just left him uh, Saturday uh, in um, Atlanta. We were together. Okay. And we see each other quite often. One of my daughters lives exactly the house right next to him. And she goes and shop for him. A number of brothers and sisters take care. No, he doesn't have uh, minute-to-minute care because that, that is, doesn't exist. But in general care, there are people who look out for it, people in the first world, people, neighbors, and so forth. Nobody's going to let Dr. Clark walk by and don't give him aid if he suggests he needs it. Well, that relieved me a great deal. I appreciate hearing that because I heard it the opposite, and uh, I wanted to bring it up. Well, brother, we're glad thank it was you correct. Very much. And thank you for the call. Talk Radio 1190, WIB, you're in there with Dr. Ben. Good afternoon. Gary, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm bad. Uh, I have two quick questions for the good doctor. Uh, one, he, I'd like to know how, how far back uh, do the Jews go. It goes back as far as the biblical Moses. Uh, in Torah, uh, in the book of uh, uh, Exodus, which is we could call Moses' book, uh, it speaks of Moses marrying the daughter of the high priest of Ethiopia. In order to have the high priest of any country, you must have other priests, lower priests. In order to have priests, you've got congregations. And Moses is uh, at, at the, uh, run the Egyptian already in the 18th dynasty. You have the, the, the major figures in uh, Judaism is Avram, Joseph, Moses. Those are your major fig- all your, uh, figures. As a matter of fact, the Quran, the Torah, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, the Torah is said to be written by Moses, which cannot be. The, 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 the Torah came out in seven, around 700 B.C., from the Sanhedrin, Moses had already died about 700 years. It's, it's done in, in, in his honor, but not that he wrote it. I see. Well, what, uh, I ask you that because I saw it on television. And an Israeli Jews say that uh, Felicia's, when they did study, Felicia's actually went back about 400 years or something to that effect. I mean, they, 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 they did everybody but themselves. <laughs> they, they, they went back to the, to the Khazars in Europe. Uh, uh, they, they want to say... They, as again, what line of Judaism does they come from? Uh, rabbi Obadiah Yosef, in 1971, he was the chief rabbi of the uh, Sephardic uh, community. That's meaning non-white Jews in Israel. People don't realize that most of the Jews in Israel are not white people. I see. They're oh. non-white people, but they don't have the political power or the economic power. Uh, one other question. There was a name of the people that you said... Um that the European Jews came from during this... this Khazars. Would you spell that for me? K-H-A-Z-A-R-S. If you want to see the best story of this, right, read, read a book called The Thirteenth Tribe. The Thirteenth Tribe by Arthur Kotzler. K-O-E-T-Z-L-E-R. And also read Are the Jews a Race by Kotsky, written in England in 1919. And, All of right. course, and of course, they got other books. I, 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 my book, uh, We the Black Jews, Witness to the White Jewish Race Myth, is back out again. It just came out uh, last Friday. Then I'll pick it up. All right, brother. So one, one other question. What, what year was that, that these Khazar pe- people? Uh, wrong back there in the third, third, fourth century of the common era. Thank you, bud. And thank you for the call. You Talk Radio 1190, WIB. It's 20 minutes after the hour of 1 o'clock. We'll take a quick break. We'll come right back, and Doc's going to take us into Brazil as well after this. We are back live at Talk Radio 1190 WIB, the GBE 93, more than a month for our history. Our guest today, our elder and certainly a legendary historian, that is Dr. Ben. Uh, Doc, I wanted to get a bit on on Brazil, uh, and we're beginning to uh, see more brothers and sisters who are making contact. Uh, Dr. Uh, Jeffries recently went down to Brazil, and and more brothers and sisters here are beginning to experience it and beginning to recognize that it's a very important part of our culture in terms of the African experience in Brazil. Yes. Well, I think that uh, to understand Brazil, you understand who are the people. Basically, the people, most of the Africans who went to Brazil came from Central West Africa, uh, all the way into Manicongo, which is today called Zaire, and other areas like that, Angola. And most of them were taken from that area to uh, what is today called Brazil. Brazil has another history that no other place in the West has. It has the only uh, European power, the only European king that moved from Europe and reigned as king 
was in Brazil. When Pedro V moved from Brazil to, uh, um, to, to live and carry his throne to Brazil. Now, Brazil People had... moved from Europe, you mean? Yes, carry his kingdom. Okay, and, and ruled from Europe, from Brazil. There's another uh, uh, point, is that Brazil has the first independent uh, democratic nation, republican nation in the entire world in the West. Uh, people say it's the United States. That's a joke. Palmyra was long before the United States. That's when the, the Africans revolted against the Portuguese, went up and established their own country up there up, up in the hills. Uh, when they uh, lost to the Portuguese, it's by the amount of Africans who had converted. And in the Portuguese army, just the same thing like what happened to the Maroon in uh, Jamaica. The Maroons trounced the British, took the highlands, and only lost after uh, conversion of many of their people to Christianity. And then when they were ready to fight, when British came to fight them, they were Christians, and so they didn't fight as, as Maroons, they fight as Christians to defend Christianity. Uh, that's the colonial thing that went along with the religion and, and the gun. Uh, Brazil, again, offers to us, uh, in many cases, uh, untarnished culture uh, in art, in, in uh, uh, different kinds of uh, science, the, the, the herbal science, uh, medical science, mm. uh, also in even defensive uh, thing, the capoeira, uh, all of that. Uh, but the tragedy in Brazil, however, is the stratification of quote-unquote race. The near civilized, the civilized, the light, the brown, the chocolate, the well, 50 cocoa, different, cocoa. Yeah, for everything, uh, these right. are people calling themselves all these kind of names. Yeah. And when you, if all of them with all those names come to New York or come to Georgia or Mississippi, will be told, nigger man, where you don't go sit down. Hmm. You, you understand? But the Portuguese had created that in order to rule, to, to, and to rule effectively uh, without a problem. If Brazil people could get away from the different stratification, they will take over the country, mm. the Africans of Brazil. Mm -hmm. There's enough to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, this whole uh, issue of what happens when you begin to see our story from this global perspective, which brothers like you uh, have certainly been promoting, um, I'm thinking about the educational system. What is your own feeling about what is occurring, or not what is occurring, we know what's occurring, what should be occurring? What constitutes what you would feel would be an African education? An African education has to be one in which the African community, uh, in being in charge of its own education, uh, set the pattern of the culture. In other words, an African education must have Africa as the center. Just like a European education has Europe at the center, Asian education has Asia at the center. Uh, when the Chinese were not, uh, quote unquote, integrated, uh, most every un, uh, Chinese boy and girl in the afternoon went to a Chinese school to learn their Chinese culture. Uh, unfortunately, African Americans were never subjected to that. When our churches and things should have been teaching us an African culture, they were more trying to make us Euro as European as possible. Uh, first thing was to give us a piano lesson or a violin lesson, not for the, not for the sake of the instrument, but it, for the sake of getting the culture. Uh, I want you to play classical music, as if every music isn't classical. Every culture got classical music. It just means the highest mu music of the culture. The Japanese got classical music. The Germans got it. So did the Ghanaian got it. The highest cultural music. In other words, all these terminologies and uh, categories that established by the Europeans to set himself aside as better than other people, we have been able to take. Now, we have to have a system of education that show our God looking like ourselves. Every people got the God look like, like, looking like them. It's silly to have a God looking like the guy who conquer you. Now, how are you going to get over that God? How are you going to think of much of your mother and your father? And all the gods and all the deity and the saints look like the guy that conquer you. You want to be like the guy that conquer you. Uh, people who, who show strength uh, being conquered by another group, the only ones that show any strength are those who retain the vision of their deity in terms of themselves. Mm. 
We'll take a break and talk Radio 1190 WIB. We'll come back and give you a bit of Doc's itinerary and what's coming up. He is always ever busy, as you know. We'll also have time for a few more telephone calls as we wrap up this afternoon inside of the GBE, the Global Black Experience, at Talk Radio 1190 WLIB. We'll take some of your telephone calls, but before we do that, I do want to make sure that we give you some idea of the itinerary of Dr. Ben. First of all, he is going to be at the Slave Theater on Wednesday. That is this Wednesday. It'll be at 7 p.m. Uh, Doc will be there on Wednesday. I'm looking at the schedule now. And, Doc, I see you're going to be down at a Tuskegee a week from now, too, huh? Yeah. That yeah. should be great. Yeah, this is about, I guess, my fourth, with my fourth time back at Tuskegee. That is great. And then on, now, I see that on Friday you're going to be with a group over in Yonkers? Yes, a Friday evening. Okay. That's uh, Lionel, Lionel um, up there. And that's the Yonkers uh, study group. The Yonkers study group. Study okay. group that conducts that. Okay, now on uh, the 11th of February, you'll be at the New York Urban League State Office Building? State Office Building for the New York Urban League. Okay. That will be 7 in the evening, too. Okay, great. That's at 7. And I see Hostos Community College coming up. In the Bronx. Uh, and that's the 16th of uh, February. Yes, uh, I think that's even also. Okay. And uh, you'll be at the uh, Hofstra University? Yes, uh, that, Dr. Clark and myself. And that's the 15th? The, yeah, that's an annual. Oh, you and Dr. Clark? Yeah, that's okay. an annual thing. Okay, great. Uh, let's see what else is happening in local. Because I see, but, and let me just mention to those of you who are listening, what I'm skipping over are appearances in places like uh, Boston, Los Angeles, California, University of California at Davis, and so forth. And I'm going to come down Newburgh, Newburgh, New York. Where's Newburgh is up about, uh, it's about an hour, hour and ten minutes ride okay. from New York City. This is uh, for the Black Student Union? Okay. Yeah, but I'll take a train. Okay. Uh, let's see, and you'll be at Florida, Detroit, and De Detroit is where you kind of wrap up, really, isn't it? Uh, you, Detroit will be for the Alkeblan uh, Association. That's the brothers that I had that's a chance the brothers, to meet. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah good yeah, brothers, too. Yeah, the brothers the yeah brothers. that's all right. So a, a, busy, a busy month, as usual, obviously, we note. Yeah. There's something that you do, and we'll start taking some telephone calls in the time that remains, but I want you to uh, perhaps maybe give us a perspective on this issue, and you were talking about it just before news headlines the telling of our story. How do people move from, and, and, and I'm saying this, of course, in respect to the work of, of, of Dr. Carter G. Woodson and starting the week and what now has become the month, and now New York State has talked about this being the year, but people like yourself, really, and as you indicated, going back to 1939, somehow saw fit in terms of all your work to make this a 365-day experience and commitment. I know that there are a lot of people who talk about the fact, well, I work, I do this, and so forth. I'd, I'd love to be able to be more into my culture, more into my history. Can you talk with us about how a person should approach the idea of making their history and their culture this kind of 365-day experience for them and for their families? Well, in my case, it became probably, uh, I wanted to use a word, but then it would it probably make people think I'm mentally ill. But it came in almost an obsession. Mm. Uh, it is not just the history, it's his story of something. It's my story about myself and my people. Mm -hmm. uh, his story has long gone out of my head. It is our story that I'm dealing with. It's not his version about me. That's why I go to the source. I went to the source to find out about me uh, uh, firsthand. Uh, and it became so compelling that it became a way of life. Mm. When I read what the brothers of ancient time did and felt about their, 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 their women, uh, including their mother, sister, and so forth, I found it to be the correct thing to do and the correct attitude. Therefore, my whole outlook on the African woman changed. When... Uh, I saw her, like most of the young men, as a lay, somebody to lay, you know, the usual expression. As a young man, when I went to Egypt and looked and see how they treated, in the, the ancients treated the African women in those tombs, in the temples, what they did, how they made goddess and think them and worship them and, and so forth, uh, uh, that they, they, they make the symbols which West, the West follow, for instance, the United States uh, Justice Department is copied after uh, Egypt by the scale, the symbol of the scale, and the woman with the uh, with a sword instead of a... The, ours don't have a sword, she has a, a feather in the hair, and everything like that. Then I had to stop and ask myself, this crazy thing that you're doing in the West, your attitude towards women and the Adam and Eve thing, you got to drop that, because that doesn't make sense. 
uh, to persecute a woman on the basis that some woman named Eve committed the first sin and all that kind of thing. Uh, and, you, and, you, and your brothers have raised the woman to top shelf instead of a thousand pipers. You, 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 you got the sister up there top it. When they show me the African woman being represented of God, symbolic of the sun coming through her vagina in the morning with the rays and so forth and going back in the evening and going back through her entire body, using the woman as that kind of an image, I mean, what, what could you do, brother? You, you're home. You're mm -hmm. safe. Well, you did something, uh, Doc, and we'll take some telephone calls, but I, I know that I speak for many brothers and sisters, and I find it interesting whenever I travel. And, you know, I'll wear my cartouche, right? And what happens is I will almost inevitably, if I go to any kind of black event in the country, I'm going to meet somebody in the room who has went on a trip with Dr. Ben to Egypt. It is, a, it is something that I observe more and more consciously because I almost anticipate it now. You know, when I go into the room, it's kind of like, you know, you're looking around to see, you know, who's in here who made the trip, you know, it's that yeah. kind of thing, you know. And, uh, and, and Doc, I want to just say publicly to you how, how, uh, how thankful and appreciative I am because if I first became aware of you through a tape that I got at the African Street Festival. It almost caused me to have a car accident. Mm -hmm. When I was listening to the tape, I just pulled over to the side of the road to listen. And then some... That is the biggest one I've heard. <laughs> yeah. All right, brother? Okay. All right. So, so Doc, Doc says he classifies it under the category of old wives' tales. Uh, All right. So he says don't worry about it. Okay. All right. Good enough, brother. Thank you for the call. 151 at Talk Radio, WIB. Let's go inside of the uh, studio for a call right now. Thank you for joining us in the experience. Hotep. Hotep. Uh, the question I would like to ask to Dr. Ben is uh, the origin of homosexuality and the origin of polyandry, if ever. Well, I don't know about the origin of homosexuality since I don't believe in it. And uh, I don't tolerate it. And I, 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 I wouldn't compromise this position. I, have, I told him, you come to my house and wiggle your behind you through my door you go. Now, if you come to my house and behave like a man in this house, you can come. But if you're going to wiggle and swaggle like a woman, you'll get out of my house. Or I put you out of my house. And I don't care who don't like it. Because I stand in a position that as an African, we believe in the procreation of the race. And you cannot have procreation of race, a male penis entering a male anus. It's, and it's not a, a preferred lifestyle. If one would tell me that a vagina and, a, and, and an anus is the same thing, then somebody crazy, and I know it is me. What about the polyandry, Doc? Polyandry came when the society has too many men and not enough women, then the women share the men because they wanted enough women to go around. So she get two, three, four. It is a condition forces most of these uh, uh, marriage patterns. As you Where were was that? Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Carla. Go ahead. Where was that? Uh, in, in Europe or... Africa? India have uh, polyandry right now. They have one, been one or two African groups, but they do not exist anymore. The, where the men have gone off to war and so, but it's very, really uh, practiced in, in, in uh, Africa there, and it's really practiced, nothing wrong with it, it just so happens that more societies now have uh, more men, I mean enough men, uh, so that what they do is to uh, double up on the women. So, so Doc, if I'm hearing you correctly, then you're saying that the polyandry and the polygamy are emerging from social conditions. From this condition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Okay, to the caller, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, Talk Radio 1198 WIB. We'll take a quick and final break before we wrap it up inside of the GBE with Dr. Ben. We're at Talk Radio 1190 WLIB inside of the GBE, the Global Black Experience. Our final few moments, and they've moved all too quickly uh, for Dr. Ben joining us inside of the GBE today. Don't forget again, he'll be appearing at the Slade Theater this Wednesday. And I'm actually going to ask uh, for something here, and Dr. Lewis is in the studio with us. Uh, maybe a telephone number for people who want to get more of that itinerary, because we always will get calls from people who say they'd like to follow up. Maybe they might miss Doc Wednesday at the Slade or other days. Oh, yeah, Dr. Lewis, want to check it Yeah, you can, it's 212-281. Uh, one seven zero zero two one two two eight one one seven zero zero. If you want more information on Dr. Ben's itinerary and schedule, repeat it one more time, Dr. Lewis. Two one two two eight one one seven zero 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 zero. Okay, great. And that's again for doctors for Dr. Ben's uh, itinerary. For those of you who are understanding, again, his appearances are going to run through at least uh, pretty close to the middle and a little bit past that in the month with a few New York schedules in there as well. And some of you may be out of town, may want to catch him on some of those out of town engagements across the uh, country as well. Uh, Doc, I wonder, I gotta get this question in and I, I, I said again, you look great. How are you feeling? I, I feel rather fine. I hope that I may feel it is what it is because yes. I, I don't want to say I feel that good and then come out here and collapse. Yes. But I, I feel as good as I guess as a man, a 73 old man could feel. 73 dollars. Yeah, the sister. Well, sister, take care of you, brother. Boy, I'm you serious. Your <laughs> <laughs> you look great, John. You yeah, look great. I, 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 what I attribute to, to good African women, wherever I go, they take care of me. Yeah, well, they're doing a good job, brother. Matter of fact, a great job. Yeah, brother. They don't, don't stop that. <laughs> for sure. Dr. Ben, thanks for being with us today, brother. It's my pleasure, brother. All right. Dr. Ben, joining us today inside of the experience on this date in history. Uh, the meeting, because it was 